Hi everybody, it's David from Beagle Home Inspections. Today what I'm going to be talking about is in, a, in the series of common issues that I find during a home inspection. Today I'm going to be talking about the exterior. And that's divided up into basically six different parts. The walls, the doors, the windows, um, decks, balconies, patios, those kinds of things. Also driveways, um, the grading, vegetation, and then the last is the eaves, soffits, and fascia. The short answer to, to what this video is all about is almost all the problems I see have to do with um, old age or maintenance problems or it just wasn't put in right the first. It's, it, that's just the way it works. It's a really simple thing. What I'm going to talk about first is walls or the wall cladding, which is the bricks or stone or wood shakes or shingles, um, cement slashes. Um, metal metal siding, vinyl siding, uh, composite wood siding, those kinds of things. And what I notice is if it's not put in right to start with, then they're gonna create problems. But what I see is like over old age is kind of like um, in the picture you're looking at now, it's just old and the paint is wearing off. Um, some of the fasteners are starting to come loose and it just needs to be maintained. Or if you want, it's old enough that it's falling apart maybe you should upgrade it to something different. Other than that, it's mechanical damage. Somebody hit a baseball up against it and created a hole or a hammer uh, went into it. Those are the most common issues that I see in the siding or the cladding um, of a house. The next one is doors. The doors actually last a long time. That's not the issue, but what I see on doors a lot in older homes is the trim around it. At the bottom of that trim, the paint has been um, starting to wear off and it exposed bare wood, so the wood is starting to rot. Um, that's the most common thing I see with any exterior door. The next one is windows. What I see with windows is, again, it's an aging problem. If you have a really old house that had putty or a caulking or some sealant or something like that around the window, that's getting old, it's flaking, it's cracking, it's, it's um, deteriorating. That needs to be replaced because water can get in there. The other thing is some of the materials they use to make your windows out of, it gets exposed to the sun a lot and it starts losing its elasticity, it starts losing some of its um, function and starts cracking. So you just need to replace it. Then um, the next one on here is Vegetation and drainage also we'll talk about. First part is, is vegetation. The most common issue that I see are, are two. One, there are trees so close to the house that they're rubbing up against the house or the limbs are over the roof, rubbing on the roof, rubbing against the side of the house, causing um, just the erosion and the damage from that. And over time, the wind is blowing, especially here where we live, um, the wind blows a lot. Those branches just scrub up against the house, they wear away the paint, they start wearing away the actual material, and water, bugs, things like that can start getting inside. So that is the, the vegetation-wise, that's the first most common problem I see. The second thing I see is um, vegetation right up next to the house. You should have at least, at least a minimum of three feet, four or five feet would be better away from the house before you start planting trees and bushes and things like that. Maybe little tiny flowers and things like that by the house would be okay. Anything that has any kind of a um, root system to it, don't have it near the house. It gets up near the foundation. It causes soil settling. The roots can actually start finding little cracks in the foundation, and then they can work, start working their way in, making those little cracks bigger cracks. So just keep vegetation away from the house. Along with that is the drainage. Water, again, it's the most, uh, the most dangerous thing for a house. It's the house's worst enemy. You want to keep that water away. So make sure the drainage goes, the landscape, you know, goes away from your house. Stand at one of the corners of your house. Look along that side. Does the land go away from it or does it slope towards your house? If it slopes towards your house, do something to build that up to make it go away. The standard is you want to go, um, the slope should go down six inches for every 10 feet away from your house. It's not a big drop, but it's a significant drop, and it is something that you should be able to see. You should be able to see that, that slope going away. If you're looking at your driveway, 
does the top part of the driveway, is it flat or does it lean back towards the house or does the whole driveway lean, aw lean away from your house? Those are the things that you want to look for um, in, as far as drainage and vegetation. The next one is decks and balconies and patios and porches and steps and all those, those kinds of things around there. What, um, that includes driveways also. What you need to know about cement, about patios and, and driveways, those sorts of things, walkways. Whenever you pour cement, it's going to have some cracks in it when it dries. That's natural, that's normal, that's what cement does. What you don't want to see is cracks happening where one is higher than the other one or there's some settling going on underneath. Um, in your driveway, yeah, it can start causing some major issues. If it's in your garage, it can cause some major issues in there. If it's your patio, those cracks and upheavals and that kind of stuff, is water getting inside there? Is it eroding more away underneath and is it gonna to lead to bigger problems? It has the potential to affect your foundation, but it shouldn't because driveways and patios should not be connected to your house. There should, they should be separate entities from your house. Um, you hear on the radio here all the time for mud jacking, just because here in Colorado, we, our soils are so expansive that um, settling and upheavals and that kind of thing happen quite a bit. So look for it. If it's more than three quarters of an inch, then okay, you wanna start paying attention to it and what should I do to fix it? How, how am I gonna fix this problem? With balconies and railings and steps and stairs, those kinds of things, what I see most often is on a balcony is the railing is not attached properly or not attached securely. So that you grab it, you can actually shake it. So what happens, somebody trips, somebody falls against the railing, is it gonna hold them or is it just gonna buckle and they're gonna fall down to the ground? Um, that's something I, I see uh, on a regular basis. The next thing I see is uneven steps. Now it's, um, you know, for all the research I've seen is it takes two steps, you to take two steps to, for your body to recognize how far it needs to move its feet to get to the next step. Now, if you have a step that's really small on the very first step going up some, you step on that, then the next one is normal seven inches and seven inches and that goes up. That's okay. The trip hazard really comes in when you're going down because your body is used to hitting a step at a certain level and then all of a sudden, instead of five inches, it's four inches and you're, you're not ready to hit it. You can, you can trip and fall. Or if it's more, if it's a greater, a greater than seven inches, then you go way down lower. So you have the possibility of trip hazard happening there. I see the first step on a lot of steps, not the same as the rest of them. Can you avoid that? You can, but sometimes it's a really costly repair to do that because maybe there's cement under or something like that. So what do you do about it? Um, you just have to figure it out for yourself. Um, the last thing is the soffits, eaves, and fascia. And just so you know, uh, when the roof, the tile comes down from the roof, the, when you're stand, uh, and you look up underneath your house, you're standing next to the wall of the house, you look up, the flat part is the soffit. That's where you might see holes in it for vents. The fascia is the piece that goes from the tiles down flat. So if you're standing in your yard, look at your house, there's a flat board along there. That's the fascia. Uh, what I see mostly in there is like the gutter system has a hole in it or isn't sloped right or doesn't drain right or the way it's put in, the water from the roof on the shingles doesn't make it into the gutter. It splashes over or splashes back onto that fascia, into the soffits. And then what I see most often is, is wood rot. The paint starts peeling, the wood gets exposed, it gets exposed to water, and then it starts rotting. That's the biggest thing I see with the, the soffits and fascia. Okay, that was um, really quick. Um, like I said, it's really easy. Most of it has to do with old age and maintenance. That's what I see on the exterior most of the time, unless it's a mechanical kind of thing. Somebody hit it with a baseball or, or something like that. So that's the end of, of this one for the exterior of the house. If you have any um, questions or comments or you have any ideas for a future video, give me a holler. Go check out the website at www.beagle.com homeinspections.com. Um, give me a, a send an email at david at beaglehomeinspections.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. Um, everybody out there, be safe and we'll talk to you next time.